Hello everybody, today I am sharing with you my Sew for the Soul book and it is the pages 15 and 16 and it is the completion of the inside of the book. The only thing left to do on the book now is the cover and that's what it looks like ready for its cover to go on. I have sewn all the pages together. I've added a little bit of beading in places. I've um, taken a different approach to my beading and put some dangle trim in various places because uh, I like that, so that's okay. I may come back and add some singular beading, um, but I'm not sure yet. I'll wait until I've actually finished the book and see what I think. So the last two pages are pages... 15 and 16 and I'll just open it like that so we can see it and this is my pages 15 and 16 and the first thing we were to do was to find ourselves a quote and I found a quote but I changed it just a little bit the actual quote said sewing calms the mind I think it was um or oh, no, sewing mends the soul, but I changed mine and made it sewing calms the soul because this whole project has been very calming for me as I'm sure it's been for a lot of other people as well um, just to slow down and, you know, relax a little bit. Um, so sewing calms the soul and I have put Sew for the Soul book down the bottom here and on Anne's video and I'll put a link to that in the description box below she shows you how to do this this is the first time I've ever actually um, done this kind of you know um, like I've done a back stitch before of course but I've never sewn words before so um, that was that was good to do I enjoyed doing that I'm surprised I could do it I look at it now I think oh wow and the A's do the O's do tend to look like O A's Ugh, let me get that right the O's tend to look like A's but um, as you can see where I've printed it out here they do here as well like you know, there's not a huge difference between the A and the O when you're stitching, but I know what it says, and I did do it according to the font. So um, so that's the printout I did, and like I said, and shows you how to do that in her video. So that was um, something new for me to do. Okay, so let me just show you the page. And this was a series of sample fabrics that you've used throughout the book or maybe fabrics that you may have wanted to use through the book and didn't get a chance to. Uh, so the first thing we had to do was find a quote and then we had to do our in, get an index of fabrics, find out what we wanted to use and then we made little flip books out of those particular fabrics and then we could add any kind of stitching or anything like that to these little flip books. So um, I'll, I'll explain this first. This is just a, a handkerchief and that's the corner of the handkerchief. It's beautiful lace. I was going to put a colour underneath it but I thought no, that last bit had to be quite plain um, and because I made my book a different size to what Anne did hers, um, I kind of made this part overlap into my last page a little bit so I had some area to work with because my page is only, um, what is it, what is my page, it's six and a half by four and three quarters, I'm not quite sure what the original size was to be, it could have been six by six or something but I went for a, a narrower page so um what I did was I used this green fabric here and I overlaid it onto this page a little bit and then put some crocheted lace over the top. I have some little daisies stitched on here 
I have my first little, well, it's not my first, but I have a little flip book of fabric at the top here. I've used a metal filigree piece to hold it down and I've just done some couching to hold that into place. On this first little fabric here, I've done some little French knots on the tiny pieces. Maybe I'll come up a bit closer so you can see that there. And then on the second piece, I have done... And, and the backs are just left. There's nothing, you know, they're not tidy or anything like that. They're just sample pieces. Some cross stitch on my ticking fabric. And then we have this pretty fabric. And I didn't do anything to that one because I really like that fabric. It's so pretty. So that one there. And then on this last piece of polka dot fabric, I have some, I think it's feather stitch. And then I've got some rig crack with some couching as well there. And then underneath I've got crocheted edge, I've got a little bit of pistol stitch, I've got a tiny little um, a Suffolk puff there with a pearl in the centre. So, And all the green background has been straight stitched all the way through. And there you go, that gives you a look of that side. And then on this side, I ended up putting a little ribbon on it. I attached it to this tiny little pair of scissors here, like that, because every time I opened the book, everything would flop open on that last page. Had I had thought ahead a little bit, I would have put this little booklet on this side opening that way. And that way that wouldn't have happened as much. But because I've got it opening that way, uh, it tend to felt full open. So I've just put some um, ribbon on here, attached it to this little pair of scissors here. Um, so I have some tatting here and I've just couched that on as well. I have a little edge of fabric here and I've done a zigzag stitch, little pair of metal scissors and then I, I stitched the ticking fabric to this lovely floral fabric there and then underneath I have another piece of this floral fabric with some straight stitch and that all joins with this bullion stitch down the side there. I have this lovely piece of doily here and I did do doilies on this page because I've used doilies throughout the book. So let's just open that flip and we'll go on to the last flip, which is up here. At the top I have some French knots which were holding the little flip book together. And then I decided to sew on this little bit of blue trim and a couple of buttons. There, this lovely, uh, I think it was a pillowcase piece of that, the floral fabric on top. Then a little doily piece stitched onto that pink fabric and it's ever so fine, that pink fabric. That was a baby's dress. And then we have some two pieces of linen because I kind of wanted to see it a bit more so I, I doubled it and that has straight stitch on it. And then we have this floral piece here which I think was a bed sheet and we have like a cross stitch, not like X but the other way around, I suppose, you know cross stitcher and then a little bit of seed stitching just for you know making sure I use the stitches that I've done throughout the book and then when you lift that one up that's the last part of the flip and I have two Suffolk puffs button daisy I have a lovely doily there and then I've done lots of I put a little bit of bright pink floral fabric behind that and did all these little um French knots, some are tight, some are loose, and I love that effect. I really do like that. And so that's on that page there, and then when you lift that last one up underneath, we have the rest of the doily piece here. We have a little bow that I've done some couching on there, a couple of buttons and some daisy trim. Green background has all been straight stitched, and then we have a little envelope that we were to make. And that is that little baby's dress again. And I did back it with some, uh, what did I use? Uh, just some, I can't remember, just some cotton fabric underneath because it was so fine. 
and then along the edge I folded some of the blue fabric over and sewed that on with a straight stitch that goes like you know you can see it's folded over the edge of that I couched a little safety pin on there and went around the edge of it with a blanket stitch to hold it on place here I just did uh what does she call that a pin stitch or something just you know tiny little stitches and I used machine thread for that um, to hold that down I have the tatting around the edge there with some little blue French knots inside of that pocket will go a little card and the card is to explain about the book you know that it was done in 2020 but I actually want to write something quite personal as a lot of you know my father passed away during this time and I want to write something about that in there so I won't be sharing that with you but it will be going into this little pocket here along this edge the handkerchief wasn't quite long enough from side to side to completely cover the page so what I did was when I cut the top part of it off I put it over here and so it has two layers of that edging going up there and there I also put the ribbon coming through so that it didn't squash the lace when I tied it otherwise it would have gone like that so I just threaded it through one of those holes and that folds in nicely. So that is the inside of the Sew for the Sew book all done now, unless I decide to add a bit more beading onto it at some stage. Um, so the next time, I need to iron that little bit of ribbon I think, the next time will be the cover and then it will be completed and it's been a wonderful project, absolutely wonderful been looking forward to it each time it came out. Um, this was a lot of work this week. I, like I said, it, it's the first time I've kind of done that kind of couching and stitching and things. I do find that it corner a little bit sharp, but I'm going to leave it. We learn by these things, don't we? So I hope you like what I've done. It is very getting very um, big now. I'm not going to do a full flip through today. You can see I've like done all the edges and things. I'll wait for the cover to go on and then I'll do a full flip through of every page once that's done. Um, I did want to give you a sneak peek of an upcoming project that I am working on. Just let me put this to the side. And this is a collaboration and it is, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is, just let me get my piece of paper out so I don't get anything out of order here. Okay, so I will give you just a little sneak peek of what I'm doing. And this is a slow stitch collaboration and this was put together by Susanna Eastdale. And Susanna's channel is Vintage Blend Studio on YouTube. And I will put a link to each lady that is taking part in this swap in the description box below. And the ladies taking part are Rachel from Roxy Creations. I'm not sure if it's by Rachel or just Roxy Creations. Then there's Sarah who is Roxy Creations by Sarah. I always get so confused with that. Okay. Then there's Anne who is Anne Brook Textile Artist on YouTube. Loretta from Sparrow Hawker Designs on YouTube. Melanie Sullivan and her YouTube channel is also Melanie Sullivan and then there's myself my cottage crafts so Rachel Sarah and Loretta Melanie and me and Susanna are all going to be doing this wonderful slow stitch collaboration over the next six months and what's going to happen is each month we will be making a page um what are the dimensions of the page? If I've got them here, I don't know if I've printed.
printed that out. Okay, uh, a seven by nine inches were to make the, the total size of the page. And what we need to do is we need to use, for each month, each person has chosen their colours. And Melanie's colours, because I'm my first person is Melanie, are bright pink and bright green. And so I am going to do a slow stitch page for Melanie, any style I choose to do in my own style. So although they're her colours, the style of the page will be in my style. Now, I must admit, bright pink and bright green are not colours I would normally just use. And it kind of, it threw me a little bit at first because I think Melanie's work is quite more, it's a lot more modern than I would normally do. And that's what threw me. But then once I started thinking my design, I just ignored the colours, decided what I want to do and then did it in her colours, which made it so much easier for me to do. So I went through my stash and I found things in bright pink and bright green. Um, and I was quite amazed that I had actually got, you know, some of these things. This green fabric here, I bought to um, do a backing on a cushion for my lounge room because, you know, it was spring and I didn't want it like in my face green, but I just wanted a little tiny touch. And because it was the reverse side of the cushion, I got glimpses of, of it every so often. So I had that green. Uh, this beautiful pink trim here was actually from Rita recently, and it's a very intense pink fabric, uh, pink trim, as you can see. Um, but I was able to use some of that in, in the piece I'm making. This was a little girl's skirt and it came with all these um, different patterns on it. And they and I used some of this in my Sew for the Soul book as well. But it's all bright pink and bright green. I've got bright pink rick rack. A little bit of lemon, but that's okay. Some white rip crack. That's the green. A bit of vintage doily now it was hard for me to find pure white because I did think it was important for me to use pure white with her piece because she likes such intense colors I think using an old white just would not have gone through it so I tried to keep to you know bright white to make it look a little bit more modern vintage you could say uh, what else did I find when I was going through I found buttons and see these here are all the little flowers that I took off this trim it has that it has all those little flowers on it so I was able to use these are what are going on it that I'm going to be using all these little flowers here what else did I find? I've got bright pink embroidery thread that I found some um, silk green ribbon two different shades by the look of it I haven't looked at this for a couple of days what else have I got in here I said buttons more different shade of um, embroidery thread there some hook and eyes some machine thread in there so I was able to gather quite a lot of bright um, things to work with for her piece I also found I also found two handkerchiefs, vintage handkerchiefs, but look at that. Now, whether I actually use these in the piece, I don't know. But if I don't use them, I'm just going to send them to her and she might be able to use them um, maybe for towards her cover of or whatever she's making. We can make a book out of this. We can do anything we want out of all the pieces once we receive them all. But I just thought that's, you know, that's brand new actually, but it is a vintage one. It's from Switzerland. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? And that one's a cotton one there. So um, I'm not going to fully show you what I've done. Oh, look, there's another button. Look at that. It's a jazzy one, isn't it? Uh, I don't want to show you completely what I've done so far. It's not finished. It's still got a lot of work. It's about, oh, 
I, I think three quarters, but it might be closer to two thirds of the way done. Uh, I'll show you. That's what it is so far. Um, there's a couple of things still pinned on. That's the direction I'm going in. I've just been playing, so that's just laying there because I'm trying to think, do I want to have a same colour stitching on the pink heart or a different colour? I might go with that. And, and this was to get an idea of some couching I want to do. And then I've layered up some circles to make some flowers. I've used this beautiful antique a doily piece here. I've just got it all tacked into place at the moment. There's some more beautiful antique pieces of lace there and then some more recent um, pieces. I have started stitching because that's got French knots holding that in place but um, oh and this has been blanket stitched on some seed stitching over here. So yes I have done Quite a bit of stitching so far. Some crosses going up here. Oh, and some leaves on the pink flowers. Straight stitch. So, oh, cross stitch too. See, <laughs> I haven't looked at it in a couple of days. In oh, probably all week actually. Um, but that's that's going to be a very fun collaboration. Um, making different pages every month for different people in different colors now this is the brightest one I will be making so um, for the first one it was a bit scary for me but I hope she likes it uh, I've done it like in a cottage style but with those deeper colors and I really like how it's looking actually which you know that's a good thing isn't it um, and then I think two or three of the ladies want uh, like floral springtime colors and then there's another lady who wants gray and white so or not gray and white gray and old white antique white and they're the colors I picked too so that's that's interesting that you know there's a couple the same um I have to say and I'm not the only one who kind of felt this way asked if I would like to take part in this I said yes straight away I never even gave it much thought I thought that will be lovely because the Sew for the Soul book is coming to an end soon it's another thing to occupy me um, it wasn't until she'd heard from everybody that she let us know who else was doing it and as soon as she told me who else was doing it I'm like oh my goodness you know I, I kind of got really nervous and I know a couple of the other ladies did as well and which is kind of funny when you think about it but you kind of you know some people are really good at what they do and it can be a bit intimidating but I've calmed down now that I've started the page unless she hates it then I'll probably get nervous again <laughs> but um yeah that that was interesting I I'm glad she asked us before we knew who was going to be in the collaboration to be honest um because I might have been too you know a little bit scared to join otherwise anyway um I wanted to give you a sneak peek at that that was probably a bit more than a sneak peek wasn't it then I oh I was going to add a little bit of maybe a little bit of trim to it as well we'll see how I feel when it gets going uh I have what else have I been doing? I have been doing stuff. Oh, that's right. I made a box, but it's already gone to its new home. Or I decorated a box um, for a lady, for, for someone special. And that's already gone to its new home. And I'll put a picture of that. I'll put it in now because I can't really show it to you. And I've also been playing around with my felting. He's not finished, so don't laugh. <laughs> I decided to play around with my felting. Now, his face is not finished, 
um, his eyes still need something doing to him so they won't look quite so big uh, but he's my he's quite large he wasn't meant to be this large but um, I purposely made him quite hippie because well her she's going to have a pretty dress on so this is my neck new felting um, project and I think I think she's really quite sweet um, I did you I think you know there's a few things I should have made the front paws a little bit longer and you know he's her feet a little bit longer but you won't see those anyway and I thought well if she's holding on to something on in the front of her maybe because they're so short it won't matter too much but so far so good I think she's rather cute and her face will look quite different when she's finished so um, I've been going on with that as well and I think oh and I did I did do a little bit of a little bit of tidying up as well I all my my, my cottage journal I managed to put it all into a shoe box um, with all the bits that I'm going to be using for it so because it was annoying me it was spread everywhere on my desk and I'm not sure if I've done have I done anything else I'm not quite sure I haven't had it out for a couple of weeks now I haven't had any videos up for a couple of weeks. Life has just been a little bit hectic. So when I've been at home, I've mainly been doing my slow stitching um, because I've, I've just been helping my mum with stuff. So uh, what did I do? I'm not sure. I think I decided it might be just three smaller journals. Oh, I put a I put some baking paper in to put some washi washi tape on on each of them I did that yeah that one it's got some on that side as well um, so I've, I've done that before I've still got a lot to do in them but they're the sort of thing I can pick up every so often and do it what else did I do did I I thought I put some glassine in here as well oh I did here we go I put a glassine sheet in I'm going to put a few more pages in, I think, just plainer paper, just to fill it out a little bit if they're going to be singular journals. That's the paper out of the photo albums, you know, the old photo albums. That's glassing. I tend to pick those up when I can at the op shop. And that they're really nice to use in your journals. And, oh, oh, I haven't done a lot of... Um, thrifting but I did find something yesterday and that was this a little um what are they a Rolodex I managed to find one for two dollars uh, I think the only thing wrong with it is it's missing the A but that's okay so um oh, that one's a bit bent I've been after a Rolodex for such a long time. I was going to sort of get the tray one, but I've never come across a tray one, a Rolodex. So I've got this. This will be fine. I want to do something fun with that. I don't know when, <laughs> but I've got it and it doesn't take up a lot of room. So that's nice. That was nice to find. It was such a, a good price to find it with to find it as well and when I found that I found just this in the stationery section it's just some paper um the envelopes on that side some stickers on that side and the papers a few papers on that side just different prints so they're pretty maybe I'll put some of that in the journal I love the little you know the little packaging it comes in it's really nice it reminds me of another one I found in a book actually where is that it's over here somewhere oh I found it ages ago and I thought oh here it is I was in so you know how sometimes you find things in books well I that was with it as well I think 
I was oh no that could have been from a different book I found found that in a book once overseas telegram paper but I found this in a book once as well and this is like photograph sleeve it's really nice isn't it it's quite old it's got the writing on it um, but that's exactly the same style as that and that's just a piece of paper and stitched across there and stitched across there so that's a lovely idea for in your journals as well and you can just print out or put a bit of ephemera on it to make it look nice and you've got your little pockets there and there so yeah I keep it's because it's tucked over here and it keeps getting hidden by everything else I'm doing. <laughs> so I forget all about it. Anyway, I think that's it. I'm quite sure that's it for today. There's a couple of other things here, but I... Uh, um, no, I'll show you that another time, that other one. I want to try it before I show it to you. So, okay, okay. I hope everybody is keeping well. Uh, sorry for the lack of videos lately. Hopefully that will pick up again soon. Um, I hope you f go and check those ladies' channels out that I've put in the description box and follow them, so you can see what they're going to be doing for the collaboration as well. Their progress. I think. Probably just do a sneak peek each month, perhaps. And then once they receive the page, we can show the page we made for them. And we will be showing the page we receive each month as well. Um, so that'll be, that'll be fun. It'll be nice, nice to have something to keep on with over the next few months. Okay, everybody. Take care. Bye.